I'll be the first to admit that I've made errors in judgment about a board game or two in the past. Like most of us, I've judged boxes on their art, the glimpse of the gameplay that the back of the box affords us, and even the playtime. Today's game, Calico, from designer Kevin Russ, is one of the games that I judged too harshly. When our provided review copy arrived from Flat Out Games and publisher Alderac, on the surface it had everything I'm normally drawn to. Spot gloss cover, phenomenal artist Beth Sobel's Snuggly Kitty, but I looked at the back of the box, saw a game about quilts and cats, and fully dismissed it out of hand. It looked a lot like Cat Lady, a game I've tried to like but can't, and I added it to my shelf of possibility. A couple weeks later, several friends of mine in the community were lauding it as the game of a year contender, and I was forced to go back, hat in hand, to my shelf and see what I had missed the first time around. I cracked the plastic wrap and opened it up, and now I'm going to guide you through exactly my thoughts as we unbox it together. While I initially loved the tabby friend on the cover and the promise of Beth Sobel's art, what I found inside made me even more excited to actually get into this one. The giant purple drawstring bag featuring all 108 of the game's patch tiles is gorgeous and also has a very nice feel to it. Also, I keep the game's cats tokens in there for literally no other reason than being able to make a cat out of the bag joke every time I play it. <laughs> I have friends. Following that, we have the game's other tokens, buttons, and design tiles for each player, and and the cat tiles. A score pad and a master quilter badge for the winning player to pose with, move away to reveal these amazingly well-constructed player boards representing each player's in-process quilt. Once I saw these, I knew that I had to know more, so let's set up for a game and, well, do just that. Here we have myself and two invisible friends ready for a three-player game. To be honest, Megan and Maria are just off camera here, and I really wanted to do a playthrough video for this one. My concern is that this gets really thinky and can have a lot of downtime as you plan out your turn, especially for new players, but we'll get there. We each have a quilt board and our six design tiles. The first thing you'll do during setup is choose, either randomly or by snuggle ability, which three cats you're going to try and attract. There are four group one cats to choose from, as well as four group two cats, and finally choose one of the game's two group three kittens. That done, shuffle the game's six black and white patch tiles and randomly assign two to each cat. Now, while looking at the cat requirements, flip over four random design tiles and choose three of them. Put all the rest back in the box. Add those to your player board in any place that you wish in the indicated spaces and put the rest away. Pass the bag around the table and have everyone draw two tiles out. Once everyone's done that, put three tiles face up in the center of the table and we're good to go. At this point, in my discovery of the game, I was honestly floored to realize that you can learn the game's entire rule set in just three pages of rulebook. And I mean, it's not a particularly large rulebook. The game is amazingly simple. On your turn, you'll play one of your tiles in your hand onto your quilt board into any open space. You don't need to play on an edge or start next to an adjacent tile. Just stitch that square into your blankie and that's it. Once that's done, choose from one of the three face-up tiles in the middle and your turn's done. You'll replace it with a new tile, and the next player does the same, and that's the whole game. But Nicholas, you're saying, that doesn't seem very interesting, or fun, or even hard. Oh, <laughs> my friends, you have no idea. The object of Calico is to score the most points by making the most interesting quilt, which in turn attracts cats to come and sleep on it. The cats in our game are attracted by groupings of their favorite pattern. Callie likes simple dots and stripes, Almond here is into flowers and vines, and Guinevere likes ferns and the very fancy quatrefoil. If you can put together a grouping of five of the same pattern that Almond likes, then she'll come up and curl on your quilt and give you nine points at the game's end. If you can do it again, She'll come hang out with you again, and now you'll have 18 points. Do keep in mind, however, that while Callie, for example, likes both dots and lines, in order to get any of the cats to curl up with you, you have to pick one of the two patterns available and stick to that grouping. Callie likes what she likes, yo. To make things even harder, you'll have your chosen three design tiles, which can be accomplished with either color, pattern, or both. In this case, our quilt has this AABBCC tile here, which means that we can surround it with three different color pairs and earn seven points. They don't have to be next to each other, but they do have to be two tiles of the same color three times. If you can combine those in such a way as to get three pairs of patterns as well, then you'll get 11 points for doing both. Keep in mind, each of these are evaluated separately, so both the dot pattern tiles don't need to be blue, necessarily. This is by far the hardest thing to keep straight, and keep it straight you must, because going for the extra score should be your goal, so set yourself up in the best way possible. 
Finally, the third way to score points is by sewing buttons on your quilt, for what quilt would be complete without weird, annoying plastic bits. Anytime you put three or more of the same color down, including those colors on the edge, and you can add a button to that set. A button of the right color, that is. If you want a second button, you have to make a new set that's unattached to the existing one. Manage to accumulate a complete collection of all six colored buttons, and you earn the elusive rainbow button. At game's end, any buttons you have are worth three points each. So for those of you who are saying to yourself, so it's kind of like Sagrada, you're absolutely right. I got definite Sagrada feels playing this game, and that's 100% intended as a compliment. Calico is slightly more forgiving than that title, though, as you've got a hand of tiles that no one else has access to, but refreshing it does come from the center pile. Also, Calico has seven dead spots that you can dump unwanted tiles into without messing up your design. These are most often where you're going to stash tiles that the cats want, but nevertheless, they're available to buy yourself a turn or two to breathe. The overlapping center tiles are where you're going to want to pay the most attention to, so do some strategic planning here, be cautious about what you put there. You're setting yourself up for a convergence of a lot of points. Overall, before I get into where this game misses for me, and spoiler alert, it ain't much, I want to highlight just how wonderful a puzzle Calico presents. While on the surface it would seem that with only two tiles in your hand and only three to choose from on the table, combined with a strict limit of what's available in the bag, you're going to most often be forced into making concessions about how best to fill out your board. In practice, this happens much less than you'd think. Given that the design tiles don't dictate location, you end up with far more flexibility and creativity than you'd expect, which leads to some wonderful surprises on the table. Additionally, Calico is absolutely phenomenal to look at. Beth Sobel is easily one of my top three board game artists working today, and her name on a box alone is worth a good long look. The completed quilts at Games End are eye-poppingly colorful, and a well-crafted board begs to be Instagrammed. The kitschy buttons and wispy cats only serve to endear me even more to my creation. It's so incredibly rare that a game can combine simple yet compelling gameplay along with outstanding visuals, and Calico delivers here without question. So, what's not to like? Honestly, I'll bring this full circle with two main points that might make you pump the brakes. First of all, many people are going to make the same mistake I did. Calico's deceiving on a shelf, and it would cause people looking for exactly this type of game to pass it by. I don't know what the solution is for that, because God knows I'm no graphic designer. I'm hoping people like me can get the word out about this one before it's too late, because Calico is far, far more of a game than even pictures of it in action would let on. Secondly, as I mentioned at the beginning, there's a serious AP issue at play here. Once a tile is played, it can't be moved, and mistaking, making a mistake in placement that you don't see for a round or two could impact your feeling about how the game in progress is going. Mistaking a flower pattern for a fern pattern has happened in games I've played, and it's annoying if you realize it once the tile's in your hand, and it's positively frustrating once it's on the board. Also, players who know exactly the tile or two that they need to make everything work out great are going to be frustrated when it never comes out of the bag. I think most players could pivot once someone else snatches the tile they needed, as after all, that's the price of player interaction, but having it never even be an option? Keeping you on the leash until the very end of the game when you finally have to give up? Well, that's a special kind of hell. Players can easily be forgiven for taking a long time in their turn to sort out what they want to do given their options, but it won't endear them to others at the table begging them to avoid stretching a 45-minute game session into well past an hour. As always, though, your mileage may vary. Calico is not only a phenomenal game with an amazing pedigree, but it's also served me with a serious lesson in looking past initial impressions. Hopefully, you'll all also learn from my mistake. Let's go through our checklist before I give you my final thoughts. In the box, rulebook clear and non-gender pronouns. The 16-page rulebook is replete with full-color examples, and lots of them. The last two pages of the book are dedicated to the cats of Calico, which are universally adorable. You can learn the entire game on just three pages of the rulebook, which is insane given the thinky depth of this title. The rulebook also uses second-person pronouns you and yours throughout. Iconography clear. The patterns on each of the patch tiles are easy enough to understand, and while the buttons each have their own shape, knowing them and recognizing them aren't necessary. Their inclusion is particularly welcome for those colorblind gamers, as each color has its own symbol, easily recognized on each tile. Very welcome for a game that relies so heavily on both pattern and color. Packaging well done. 
While there are enough baggies to house all the game's tokens, I wanted to be able to sort the game's pieces a little bit more user-friendly. Still, everything fits back in the box nicely, and there are no concerns with a vertical storage method. On the table, good representation. Ten cats come in the box, ranging from tabby to tuxedo, long to short hair. Two additional cats were included in the Kickstarter version of the box, which I don't have, for a total of 12 very diverse feline friends. Component quality. The player boards are solid units and will likely hold up very well over time. I'm a little bit concerned about the patch tiles, as during your games you're going to be holding them a lot and rustling them around in the bag. They're thick cardboard punch, but with enough play they might start to see some very serious wear. Replay value. Very, very high. Since you're only playing three cats out of the ten every game, those will vary, but also your design goals shift as well. Combining these with the tense jockeying for the patch tiles themselves, and I don't foresee Calico becoming rote anytime soon. Fun to lose. Yes. Given that a huge point swing is almost always just one tile away, you can often feel like you can claim victory if you can just manage to find that tile you need. Not to belabor the analogy, but if you enjoy Sagrada and the scoring there, you're going to love Calico. While I definitely made a mistake initially rejecting Calico, I'm so thankful for a board game community that forced me to take another look. It's such a delicious combination of bright table presence with surprising depth and crunch that I can't believe I almost passed this one up. Don't make my same mistake, friends. Grab this one at your friendly local game shop right away. I'm Nicholas, reminding you to help protect the game population. Always leave your cards. Hey everyone! If you liked our video, please hit that sub button and ring that bell for notifications. Check out all of our other offerings at goodluckhighfive.com, and please consider becoming a patron of the channel over at patreon.com slash glhfmagic. It helps us keep making reviews, videos, podcasts, and you can become a member for any dollar amount. We're also always looking for new games to review. You can reach us at glhfmagic at gmail.com. You can follow me, Captain N, the Game Master, at CaptainNGM on Twitter and Instagram, and follow the channel at glhfmagic. Remember, please shop at your local game store whenever possible. Until next time, I'm Nicholas, and good luck. High five.